Hello everyone, the Nordmedic here and in this video we are going to learn about how you can take an effective history from a patient. So history taking is one of the cornerstones of clinical diagnosis. To give you an idea what happens, whenever you see a patient in your clinic, you do a clinical examination of the patient and you take a history from the patient. Based on this history and clinical examination, you come to something known as a provisional diagnosis. And after the provisional diagnosis, you order certain tests, maybe blood test, USG, CT scan, etc. Those are known as investigations. And based on those investigations, what happens is that you come to a confirmatory diagnosis. To make it simple for you, suppose you get four provisional diagnoses, namely A, B, C and D. And based on the investigations, you get to see that uh, B, C, D are not the case. So finally, by elimination method, you come to the diagnosis that A is the confirmatory diagnosis. Right. Now, once you have the confirmatory diagnosis, you do treatment of the patient and thus the patient gets cured. The treatment can be by means of lifestyle modification, like prescribe the patient to take salt-restricted diet, oil-restricted diet, doing yo a yoga exercise or giving the patient medications as in medical management and doing surgeries like surgical treatment. Sometimes, uh, due to shortage of time in very grave situations, we start treatment right away with the provisional diagnosis and that is known as empirical treatment. So more about empirical treatment in some other video, but for now, we are here to learn about history taking. Right. So what is history taking? So before starting history taking, you have to keep in mind seven golden rules. That is, you have to be always write the history in patient's own language. No medical words has to be used. Whatever a common man speaks, write in that. Then you have to remember that you have to write the history in a chronological fashion. We will discuss that later on. Third, you have to remember that you have to avoid repetitions. Avoid repeating symptoms or descriptions. Right. Then you have to avoid leading questions. Like don't ask, do you feel like vomiting? Do you feel a headache? Do you feel a pain in your stomach like that? You can't ask that. If you do, the patients mostly answer yes and that will mislead you. Then on the number five, you have another point that you have to always characterize things. Right? Suppose if a patient is saying that the patient is suffering from pain, then characterize where the pain starts, what is the onset of pain, what is the duration of pain, what are aggravating factors, what are relieving factors, is there any radiation of the pain, like that. If the patient complains of some swelling, ask about the, whether the swelling is soft or hard, whether the swelling is painful or not, where is the swelling, these are characterizations, so these are important points. All right. Now, the final point is that always be polite and sympathetic to the patient. Right. That way, the patient opens up more in front of you and gives you a more better history. And finally, always remember to use your common sense. Why I'm saying that? You'll get to know really quick. So these are the key rules of taking a history. Right. Now, keeping in mind these seven golden rules, given, let's come to the method of history taking. Now, there are several methods of history taking. Depending on place to place, like there are some methods followed in America, some method in UK, some method in India. And depending on the hospital you are in, depending on the department you are in, depending on the professor who is teaching you, the uh, more or less the format of taking history varies. But I am using one of the most commonly used methods, that is a 10 point method, to teach you how to take a history. Now you have to be smart, when you go to your school to take history, modify this format as per your professor's wish or as per the need of your department or medical school. Right. So how is that? So we start with something known as patient particulars. So patient particulars is nothing but the details of the patient. So in the very beginning, we start with the patient registration number. So whenever you get a patient admitted or get a patient in your clinic, you get a patient's registration number that is provided by the hospital. Always note that down. And after that, if the patient is in the inpatient department, then what you have to do? You have to write the bed number of the patient. You have to write down the ward number of the patient. You have to write the department, maybe department of medicine for this case. You have to mention these things in your patient particulars, right? So this way you will be able to identify the patient first. Then we, then what we do, we take the name of the patient, we take age, because certain diseases are age specific, they have an age specific distribution, you ask for sex, like there are certain disorders which are more common in males, for example hypertension, whereas certain disorders like hypothyroidism or hypothyroidism, those are more prevalent in females. So these are, a, for that you need to know the sex, you need to know the occupation because you have to rule out occupational hazards or occupational disorders like painters suffer from lead poisoning, healthcare workers are at a greater risk of contracting a hepatitis B, stuff like that. Now, why marital status you need to know? Like marital status is a lot related with your mental peace and psychological status. And along with that, in marital, uh, marital status, if one partner in the marriage is 
suffering from a sexually transmitted disease, there's high chance the other partner will also contract that. So for that, you need to know the marital status. And finally, you need to know the address. Address will give you a geographical idea of where the person lives. And that geographical idea will give you idea of certain disorders. Right. Like in India, in hilly regions, there's a tendency of developing iron deficiency disorders. In Africa, you have malaria, stuff like that. So address is also important. And finally comes the point of religion. Do you need to ask religion to the patient? Well, sometimes you even get to know religion from the name itself. But why you need to ask religion? Certain conditions, like certain religious practices are very specific to religions. Like circumcision is very specific to Islamism. And circumcision has its uh, benefits in protecting the penis from penile cancer and stuff like that. So for that, you need to know. I mean, if the disease is suggesting some disease towards the penis, then you have need to know the religion. But don't blatantly ask about the religion because many patients find it a bit a touchy topic or sensitive topic. At least in my part of the country, in my hospital, certain patients do feel that. So be intelligent and carefully ask the religion if required. If not required, then do not ask. Again, this depends on the choice of your professor and the institute. So that's why I have put in a red color and a question mark, right? So this, this was it about patient particulars. So by this, we can identify the patient. Now, we come to the chief complaint of the patient. Now, what is the main complaint with which the patient has come up? So whenever you are writing chief complaint, write usually one complaint. Up to you can write three, but preferably write one or two. And this has to be written in the chronology and duration. I discussed chronology previously. That means, suppose a patient complains of cough for seven days, fever for two days, and difficulty in swelling for five days. So this is not the right way of proper way of writing. Why? Now you have to write things in a chronological fashion. How chronological fashion? See, we have to put things in a chronological order. Now this is in a chronology. How? Now first you are writing se past seven days, then past five days, past two days. So things are in a chronological order. And also we have mentioned the duration that is seven day, five day, two day. So always maintain chronology and duration. So this is of paramount importance, chronology and duration. Over here for explaining you the chronology, I have mentioned three, but ideally you should mention one to two. Now this, this was chief complaint. After that, we are coming to the history of present illness. So in history of present illness, we let the patient freely narrate his or her story of the current disease or we allow the patient to elaborate on the chief complaints. Right. So the free term is very important. I'll don't ask leading questions as we discussed in the seven golden rules and allow the patient to talk to you freely. Right. Now in this free talk, what patients do sometimes, they use certain medical terms. Like they will not say, doctor, I'm suffering from indigestion. They will say that doctor, I'm suffering from dyspepsia they will use certain medical terms. So in that situation, gently ask the patient to describe what difficulty they are having. You say that uh, I don't understand what dyspepsia is. Just tell me what discomfort you are facing or what problem you are facing. So just gently ask. Okay. Apart from that, now what is the way of writing history of present illness? You dedicate one paragraph each for one chief complaint. You describe the chief complaint. You characterize it. Right. Characterization I've already discussed. Then you write about the previous treatment for the same disease or the, for the same chief complaints, whatever treatment has already been done. And you finally ask about some associated problems if the patient has any, some associated symptoms, stuff like that. Suppose for in this patient, the patient had cough, difficulty in swallowing and fever. Along with that, the patient may say, I, have also, I also have a headache. I have a stomach ache or stuff like that. Okay. And sometimes add certain negative histories. Like even though the patient has a difficulty in swallowing cough, the patient doesn't have a respiratory difficulty or breathing difficulty, stuff like that. That will help you to uh, do away with other provisional diagnosis. So that's a, uh, I mean, more advanced thing. Just keep in mind, you have to write certain negative histories if possible. And this comes with experience, right? Now, whenever you ask about previous treatment to the patient, whenever you ask about previous treatment, always ask for document. Because in a country like India, we don't have electric, electronic patient records or medical records. EMR system is not available. If your country has EMR, you don't have this problem. But in India, we don't have electronic medical records. So you have to ask for the previous documents related to the previous treatment, like hospitalization records, prescriptions and stuff like that. So always ask for documents. Right. Now we come to the history of past illness. Now in this section, you ask about some major illness that happened to the patient in the past, maybe tuberculosis, maybe COVID-19. Uh, or any major hospitalization, like the patient broke his or her elbow, the patient broke the femur, stuff like that. So this may have some correlation with the present illness, right? So for that also ask documents if your country doesn't have EMR, like in India, in my part of the country, we don't have EMR system in our medical schools. So we ask for documents right away. And then ask about certain chronic diseases like diabetes mellitus, like hypertension, like thyroidism. 
if the patient is suffering from any chronic diseases or not right then ask about that okay now comes the history of medication and allergies now in that you write all the medication the patient is taking from for the chronic disease and whether the patient has certain drug allergy or food allergy or any other allergy that the patient knows knows of right so this is what you write over here then comes personal history now personal history simply the patient talks about his or her bowel bowel and bladder habit personal hygiene whether the patient is pooing and peeing properly or not whether the patient has certain addictions or not like addiction to alcohol smoking or nicotine and certain recreational drugs so whenever you are asking about alcohol smoking or drugs always quantify them how many pegs of alcohol or how many ml of alcohol per day how many cigarettes per day how many i mean ask in terms of pack years and stuff like that so your professors will teach you in details about how to quantify addict addiction or addiction behavior right now we come to the family history so family history gives us a glimpse into the genetic predisposition of the disease or in the familial pattern of the disease so ask the patient about the presence of disease if you see a seeing a patient of breast cancer ask the patient whether the mother of the patient or the sister of the patient suffers from the same disease or not so this gives the genetic angle to your to your case right a genetic angle is you obtain by taking a family history then finally you come to a psychological history like whatever the patient is saying that's only valid if the patient is psychologically sound or otherwise if if the patient have is, is suffering from any other psychological disease whether the patient is taking certain drugs or not that can affect your treatment modality or prescription of drugs or if the psychological symptoms are associated with any other disease that the patient is suffering from all right so these are important points so psychological history is important you have to ask and again psychological history history is a sensitive topic so use your common sense and ask intel in an intelligent and smart manner don't blatantly ask about psychological history and what happens if and whenever you ask about psychological history always ask for documents without documentation there's no proof of psychological illness now if the person is not able to show documents then uh, just simply write that the patient or the relative of the patients say that they have a psychological i mean the patient has a psychological disorder or stuff like that or if the patient complains of psychological problem like the patient complains of hallucination or uh stuff like that then put that in the history of present illness section where we have mentioned additional points or if you suspect that the patient may have psychological problem then that you will put on the examination section what you do after taking a history so that's the discussion of other video just remember this part and you are good to go then finally we have something known as menstrual history in females you have to take menstrual history and those who are within the reproductive age group obviously so women in reproductive age group and this history has to be in details and we will talk about that in a separate video use your common sense as, as i was speaking so one of my colleagues one of my fellow medical students one once asked one 12 year old boy in the pediatrics department about his menstrual history just said what's your menstrual history bro and the patient that 12 year old boy was perplexed he had no idea what menstruation is and his mother was furious his mother was about to go and complain about this to the consultant we others who were there present in in the in front of the patient in the bedside we somehow convinced her do not to lodge a complaint against our fellow medical student so don't do these silly things use your common sense use your intelligence and ask about things so you ask people who are in their reproductive age group women about their menstrual history and finally you ask about social history like what is their social socio economic condition you they are uh, ar whether they are living in urban or rural household is there any fam overcrowding in the family the what is the status of education like status of education uh, rural urban nature of their housing socio economic status influences a lot of disorders all right so this is more or less the 10 point idea of history taking i believe you have understood this please do go through the video once more take thorough notes and practice this format whenever you go to the clinics and see patients this history taking comes with practice history taking is an art or a skill that you have to master with repeated practice so go on practice and practice and practice and modify this 10 point method as per the requirements of your department your medical school or your professor right so i believe with this we will end the video over here if you have enjoyed this video please hit the like button share this video among your friends and peers of medical school and if you are new to the channel please hit the subscribe button press the bell icon and put the notification to all so that you never ever miss a video from my channel until then bye bye see you in the next